The country is presented with so many aspirants looking to deliver or save the country from collapse, they claim, which is the major promise most aspirants have been making ahead of their various party primaries. With a list of interested candidates in the two major parties, the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, already surpassing 40 names, were set to have the blockbuster party primaries ahead of the 2023 presidential election. One of the many candidates who has picked up his presidential nomination form under the platform of the All Progressive Congress is Senator Ken Namani. The former Senate leader, who initially lamented the high cost of the party's nomination form, was at the International Conference Center, ICC in Abuja, last week, to pick up his presidential expression of interest and nomination forms of the APC. Amongst other promises, Sinamani said he has the template used by leaders of South Korea and Japan for rapid economic development. To transform the country, he stated that he will restructure Nigeria from inefficient consumption to production. Joining us on the show as we discuss moves he is making to secure the ticket of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, and his plans to uplift the country from collapse is Senator Ken Namani. Welcome to the morning show, Senator Namani. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Ruben. Good morning, sir. Well, quickly, you have obtained the form after initially saying it was too expensive. And now, you know, you have uh, articulated some of your plans. If you could just share those uh, plans with us uh, in greater detail, how you make Nigeria uh, a more productive country, your views about restructuring, and whether or not you think that uh, uh, the major stakeholders really believe in the idea of uh, a president of Southeast extraction. In other words, what are your chances? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ruben. I am pleased to be here and uh, to share some of my ideas with you and your colleagues. First, you, you did introduce me as Senate leader. I was not the Senate leader, I was Senate president. Okay. And uh, having said this, I, I am very appreciative of the role you guys are playing in uh, creating awareness and deepening our democracy. Um, when I say you guys, I'm talking about those of you in the media. You are playing a very significant role. And uh, Nigeria is, uh, our history is replete with uh, reluctant leaders. Uh, this concept of uh, collection of uh, forms by proxies, uh, people will go and collect forms for somebody. I think we are talking about a very serious situation, a serious business leading a, a country as complicated and complex like Nigeria requires somebody who is prepared for the prime time. It, it doesn't require somebody that is uh, being persuaded to go uh, because it means the person is not really ready. Uh, the, the discussion, the debate so far has been on uh, people who's uh, a group of people have gone to obtain forms for and uh, forming uh, a shadow group and the, the, the claim that they contributed money to buy form for somebody. But if you take a close look at those buying forms for people, some of them appear to be those who are having difficulty paying their house rent. Because from their mode of dressing, bedroom helpers, robber. And how they will raise 100 million to show that they, they want a particular individual to run, I think we are starting on a wrong footing telling lies, and that should be discouraged. Anybody who is serious to contest should find time and go and pick up his form and not send people and claim that uh, he's reluctant. That's why I say our history has always been uh, uh, replete with uh, people who claim to be reluctant. So I'm not reluctant. I, am, I, I think I have something to offer to the country. One, when I came to National Assembly in 2003, in 2005 there was opportunity there was an opening to, to contest for the Senate presidency, which I did. And at that time, the National Assembly was more or less in crisis. Uh, we were having cases of uh, banana peels. Uh, most Nigerians were doubting the ability of National Assembly to uh, make our constitution a workable instrument. Uh, we, we did not waste much time. We 
got going and made sure that Nigerians started having belief, having faith, having trust in the National Assembly. How did we do it? We were able to make every person feel a sense of importance. For instance, my, my chief of staff then from Adamawa, Dr. Sali Hubelo, we got people, we got round pegs in round holes, gave senators uh, uh, committees uh, that is relevant to their training. Because in the Senate, we had all kinds of well-trained Nigerians, completely well-trained Nigerians that are, had something to offer. So we made Senate vibrant. And the Senate, you recall, is a mini Nigeria, three from each state. And the best some states can offer or can send, they are first 11. So if one could manage National Assembly and bring it to a level of recognition, stop the, the era of uh, banana pills, because we were transparent enough, and there, there was no case of uh, 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 misappropriation or anything. Till date, the National Assembly has now assumed its rightful position. It's doing very well. And we said, we, we I use the word we, because I didn't, I didn't do it alone. We said the foundation. We think that Nigeria today is facing some real challenges. We have to start by deepening the, the, the concept of trust, patriotism. Most Nigerians don't believe that uh, we can make it. We have to restore faith, hope in Nigerians. To begin with, the issue of security, because without security, we cannot do much. Our police is doing well as of now, and they have always try to do well, but where there's a limit, I will propose a special force that can deal with this insurgence, all this kidnapping and the other this thing that our soldiers are not trained to do that type of job. When I see soldiers at checkpoints, I know that we are, something is going wrong because that's not their training. We are wasting them. They are trained for a specific purpose. That is real battle. They don't have time for civil uh, activities. So if we have a special force properly trained, they can control and contain these insurgents we're talking about. If we can bring in foreigners to coach our egos, as, as mundane as uh, soccer might be, although it's very interesting to many Nigerians, we shouldn't feel a national pride. We, we shouldn't rely on uh, uh, our sovereignty that we don't need the foreign people to come and meddle into our security system. We should look around uh, uh, and find countries where such problems have been uh, prevalent and do something about hiring people to train our special, uh, special squad of our policemen to do it and equip them properly to go after these radicals, whatever name you call them. So the, the starting point to me is uh, to make sure that people can sleep with their two eyes closed. Because our Nigerians are performing well anywhere they find themselves outside the shores of our country. Why can't we do better in our own country? Uh, but to, to do it, we must have a situation where people have faith in the country, where people can move from one place to the other unhindered. So security is the starting point. Every other thing can be added onto it. Because if you are not secure, as it is now uh, uh, the, 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 the game, our people are nervous. Nobody trusts the other. So I am proposing that we have to have a special squad, trained, properly trained. I don't care if you bring them from any country. To come and train our people, we shouldn't feel ashamed of doing that, soliciting for expatriates who can come and help us. We do it with our soccer team. Each time we, we find people, uh, our, our soccer is going down, we look outside and find a good coach and it will turn things around. You remember the era of uh, Bonfrey Joe and the rest of it. Now, we didn't qualify for the, the World Cup, and most people, including myself, we feel very unhappy. Right, so, sir. Are more you, importantly. Are you advocating for the use of mercenaries? That's my first question. But my second question relates to your party's primaries, which you would have to scale before we even start getting into your plans 
if you become Nigeria's president. I want to talk to you about the contentious Good. Form 18, which I imagine that you must have signed, since you're one of those who have purchased the form. In that Form 18, it's a letter of voluntary withdrawal, and I use the word voluntary advisedly, which says that the, candidate, the aspirant is withdrawing for the best interests of the party. How do you feel about the inclusion of that form amongst the documents that you had to sign? And what for you would amount to the best interests of the party in order for you to withdraw from the race? Well, I think as a lawyer party member, if it becomes absolutely necessary and the party in its wisdom deems it necessary to ask any particular aspirant to withdraw, uh, I will not be disobeying the party. But as it stands now, signing of a letter of withdrawal, when we have not even started, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. But uh, uh, we, we wait and see how it goes. So I've not actually uh, signed it because I'm not too sure. I'm not quite clear about signing of uh, a withdrawal when the race has not even started. I'm withdrawing already. So what's the purpose? I, I just don't know. But it's vague to me, very vague. And therefore, I'm not taking the, the risk of signing it right away. But I, 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 I don't know what, but I, I must say that I believe in the supremacy of the party. Uh, if, if the party, in its wisdom, uh, for any reason um, that is cogent enough and convincing, uh, I, I will have no alternative if we are to do that. But signing of a blank form for a race yet to start, I don't understand the implication of that. All right. Uh, so two things. I don't know if I've addressed your question. Yes, sir. You have. Thank you. But you had not addressed your okay. question on mercenaries. mercenaries. Thank you very yeah. much. I also asked you about mercenaries. Are you advocating oh, yeah. yes, yes. yes, No, I didn't. I, I, the, uh, no, no, I'm advocating. I gave a simple example that... Green Eagles will normally require foreign coaches to make impacts on the world stage. And I don't see why we should feel embarrassed or ashamed of calling on some countries that have gone through what we are now going through to tell us how they did it and send the experts to train our policemen, special crack sport, to go after the bandits. I'm not saying we bring mercenaries to come and fight for us. There are so many people hovering around doing nothing, but they need to be trained for specific act of dealing with these insurgents. I don't think the present police force we have have adequate training and, and, and the resources to handle it. Okay. Okay. And the army is not way suited to deal with the domestic issue. Okay. Th thank you, Senator Ken Namani. You know, when you said the word uh, being a loyal thank party you. man, I looked and I laughed because we know your antecedents, <laughs> and uh, you were strongly a PDP man, and you left the PDP to preserve yourself because you thought there were going to be investigations against you. So when you say you were a loyal party man, I'd like you to expatiate on that, that if this doesn't go your way, and uh, maybe if the PDP comes into presidency, would you move back to the PDP to still preserve yourself? That's one. Number two. One of your greatest uh, bragging rights, like you wrote in your book, is the fact that you played an instrumental role in the third term agenda, that you were part of those that scuttled the third term agenda of Oluche Ambassador to uphold democracy. But a lot of people have challenged you on that and said, it was just happenstance that you were the Senate president at that time, and there was nothing prominent you did as regards the third term agenda. How do you address those two questions, sir? Uh, the, the first question you said, investigation investigation about what is not uh, you've come again it's, it's like that form you ask if, if i signed or not investigation against what if, if you define the area we are going to be investigated about and that's why we moved out i would be glad to expatiate on that on national television so why did you leave your very now, good friend on the issue Jonathan? of uh, what, what did i leave him yeah why did you leave the pdp I don't understand. I said, why did you leave the PDP then no, and move to the APC? I, uh, no, you use the word investigation. I've never been investigated anywhere, both at home and abroad. But if, if you know of any, feel free to ask me. Now, I left PDP 
on account of uh, people who can remember that I played a role in forming what we call G21. There were areas that I thought our party was going astray. And I made it known to the National Working Committee at Wadata Plaza. At the end of the election that we lost, we were pretending as if we won. We kept on going as if nothing happened. I told them we have to apologize to Nigerians and get ourselves on the, on the part of uh, being a little bit uh, appreciative of the fact that we had a number of years to serve. And at this time that we lost, we must change our gear and, and bring ourselves to a level that people can start subscribing to our, our preachings one more time. There are many other things that I suggested to the party. I led a delegation to the party headquarters, that is the, the PDP at that time. I told them, look, the way we are going is not fair enough. I made suggestions. Many people who are still in the party can remember that. So I don't, uh, uh, I, after doing that, and uh, there was no appreciable change, I, I put, in, I took full page uh, in national dailies to announce my departure. I did so. And I gave myself 12 months, I, I, almost 12 months, before I joined APC. So I, it, it wasn't a hidden something that I, I gave my reasons for, for leaving and I left. Okay. So please, if, uh, okay. uh, if you can shed a little light on okay. the investigation, use the word investigation. I'm okay. surprised at that. So, so if it doesn't go your way in the APC now, probably you might go back to the PDP because those are the reasons you've given. And what was your role in the third term agenda? And Scotland, the third term agenda of Olusha Well, Sanjo. I, as, okay, uh, let me quickly clear the point you raised. If, if, if it doesn't go my way in APC, I will remain in, in APC. Why? It's my last bus stop, I, I must say. I'm not growing younger. I have no point of humping from one party to the other at this stage. By the way, I'm not desperate. I don't need to even to belong to a party. If it comes to that and I, I don't feel satisfied or I feel I've been maltreated, I step out. But I'll be a good citizen. So that's that. Then on the issue of the term, I know it was going to come up. As a presiding officer, I had a, a, any of those a people claiming one thing or the other. I was a driver's seat. Because any person who knows a, a little bit about legislative work will know that a presiding officer plays a very key role. I could have swung anything in the, the, the debate one way or the other. But I was convinced in what we are doing. I believe that publicity confers legitimacy to whatever any person is doing. If it's well publicized and you have nothing to hide. And that was why we invited media you guys to come and cover the proceedings so that you see what we are doing and follow it. This is what our uh, community's constitution we are trying to amend. It's a national constitution. And the, the pressure came heavily that we are, I should clear the gallery. I should ask uh, the, the media people to go. Well, I said, let somebody put it to uh, move a motion so that it can be done because I'm just first among equals. But as a presiding officer, I had a key role to play. And I am I'm telling you right now, and I've always said so, that a presiding officer can change the tone of a debate. He has the responsibility to do that. Any other person who claimed he did something outside than what happened at the floor, the red chambers, is joking. Because if the person wanted to even move a motion or say anything, it still has to be recognized by the presiding officer. And if I, if I haven't recognized the person, he will not say anything. If he does so, I will ask the sergeant to, um, to walk the person out. So any person making claims outside the chambers is joking. So our role was, uh, uh, luckily enough for me at that time, I had a lot of respectable, well-resourced individuals as senators, men and women. They played a role. It was a collective effort. It was a collective. They knew where we were going. They knew what would be the result the next morning if we didn't behave well. And we carried it through. So till to date, people are saying, ah, we threw away the baby and the bathwater. But nobody can fault what we did. That throwing away something was, we reached a level 
We haven't got, gotten to the third reading where we have uh, separated the chaff from the, 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 the main uh, uh, things that we are trying to uh, sift through. Well, so we haven't gotten there. So it, it, it requires a political courage to pronounce the bill dead. And that's what I did. Well, Senator Namani, I mean, you've addressed some of these details in your book, uh, Standing Strong. Uh, but still, uh, you can be Thank sure you. that the issue will always come up. Uh, it will always come up, definitely. Anyway, I wanted to ask you two things. The first is yeah. uh, the proposed further amendment to the Electoral 2022 uh, being given expeditious consideration uh, by the National Assembly. The Senate met yesterday and uh, took another look at uh, Section 84.8 with regard to statutory delegates. The uh, House is also meeting today uh, to do exactly the same thing. Uh, what do you think about this oversight, this mischief, uh, that they say they need to kill very quickly uh, ahead of the uh, party conventions. Uh, then the second thing I wanted to ask you is about the nomination form. First, you said the nomination form was too expensive at 100 million. You even called on uh, INEC to provide okay. guidelines, although in the Electoral Act there are already guidelines with regard to campaign finance and the amount of money, yes. the ceiling in terms of uh, uh, donations. But then eventually, you know, you change your mind, uh, you brought out the 100 uh, million. One would have thought that you would be consistent and protest that because the amount is too high, uh, the chairman of your party should not have said that anybody who cannot bring 100 million should just forget it. Uh, Ruben, uh, can I quickly comment on the issue of Standing Strong, the, the book I wrote, mm -hmm. my, my own account? I, I expect other senators who served with me to do the same. Let them give their own account. And then uh, both present people and the posterity can go through. And it will enrich our knowledge of how our National Assembly is going. Uh, talking about, uh, I, if, you, if you went through my statement well, I did not complain particularly about myself in the issue of the high cost of obtaining uh, the nomination form and the uh, the intent form. Uh, it seems to me that we, we, we should not indulge ourselves in exclusive politics where we exclude the youth, the women, and some other people that may not uh, have the means or who have not accumulated enough resources to, to spend in buying of uh, nomination forms. I understand that in the United States, if you are running for the same race, it's about $5,000. And I, I, I think that we'll be excluding quite a number of highly qualified people when we uh, come up with such a figure. But so far, it looks like it has not excluded any, any person because with the proliferation of aspirants, it, it looks like 100 million is now uh, uh, translated to about uh, 100, it's getting down to 100 naira or thereabout. And that is, I don't know how our people outside are looking at us. Because as far as I know, 100 million is a lot of money. It doesn't matter if you change it to pounds or to dollars, or any, any, any of that currency. So I was talking about our youths and women, people who are depressed economy. By the way, we, we shouldn't uh, shy away from that. Our economy is uh, facing through, is going through a lot of uh, difficulties. And so many people are having big problems in their homes. And that should be considered also, that uh, uh, it's not peculiar to Nigeria, but um, I'm afraid that if we allow such high cost of uh, uh, procuring forms to go on, that may not all go well for our democratic process. Now, you can see the shadowy groups that go about, say, that purchasing form for somebody. That is a laughing situation because people, I, I wonder how people outside are looking at, at our country now. If we position as serious as, as number one seat, our symbol of democracy, the presidency, it's not about the individual occupying the seat, but the seat itself. Uh, people go about and say that they, 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 uh, they raised funds. Uh, uh, organizations that have no bank account, I don't know how they came up with uh, 100 million. Or did they pay cash? How much, if you see the people going to submit such things, you find out that it's a big lie and it should be discouraged. So I wasn't talking about myself as an individual, as an aspirant, but I'm saying we should make it such that it will be 
to the reach of so many other people who may want to uh, offer themselves to, to serve our country. I asked about Section 84.8, which uh, the National Assembly is trying to amend to allow statutory delegates, super yes. delegates, as they are also known. Yes, uh, super delegates, I think, are very necessary. And uh, I, it, it must have been an oversight in, in the previous uh, amendment that has been signed by Mr. President. Uh, there's no way super delegates will be excluded from participating. Those are people with a residual memory of party activities. Those that have helped the party in the past, they should participate in voting. And they are, by the way, they are the key people that, uh, if, if you apply the term super delegates, it makes a lot of sense. Most of them will come because they think independently. They may not be influenced by either their state governors or by other, any other godfather. Some of them can stand firmly and vote according to their conscience. So it is important that they are included in the voting process. And as I said, I believe it must have been a, a, an a, inadvertent a serious omission uh, from the first bill. So I think it's quite in order. Right, the, if they can get it through. We don't have an awful lot of time left, but you've already talked about the deep insecurity that we're living under. And you, re you referred to in that statement that you made against this exorbitantly high price of the nomination form that you purchased. And obviously, if you've paid 100 million naira, it's safe to assume that you will fill that form and you will submit it. But you just you refer to the distressed economy caused by global economic meltdown, over which we have no control here, domestic insecurity, which you've addressed, and lastly, low productivity. How would you solve that issue of low productivity if given a chance to do so? Well, you see, we as a, a country, we, the, the emphasis, if, if we emphasize high productivity and we give incentives to uh, producing sectors of our economy, uh, making sure that there's a steady power supply because so many uh, people are discouraged from going into production because of this uh, uh, epileptic power supply everywhere. Uh, if various states or any group that can afford it is allowed to generate the, the, their own electricity and distribute. I don't know of any other country where you have a centralized uh, uh, power generation and transmission. Uh, it, 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 it is important that we, we know the, the, the roadblocks that make it very difficult for people to be uh, effective and efficient in their productive activities. Uh, power supply is a major one. Uh, yes, if, 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 if you have an absence of light, you, you can turn on your generator and then uh, you need light to pump water. But if you have no water at all, water, to, do I see it has no substitute. Uh, there's so many hindrances uh, because of bad roads, infrastructure, this, but the present administration, uh, do, do I see it, has addressed the issue of, is addressing the issue of infrastructure that, that, that will help people gain access to the rural areas. Uh, those of us from uh, Southeast were very, very appreciative of what the present administration has done on the Enugu uh, Parakot Express Road. It's not quite finished, but they've done a fantastic job. The second Niger Bridge and so on. Productivity can go on when we encourage uh, little uh, and, and uh, small scale enterprises to, uh, and our government is really, in a way, encouraging this by making sure that uh, there will be affordable loans. If people are able to get some loan with low interest, that will also assist them in, uh, in hiring people and, of course, going about producing things, and if, if the security aspect is taken care of, okay. people can actually move faster okay. in creating productive and, uh, and, and distribution that will be also quite effective okay, real quickly, and efficient. Real quickly, Senator, as we wrap up, you said you are going to be building on the legacies of President Muhammadu Buhari. 
So would you say that President Muhammad Buhari has done well for Nigeria? I did not say I was going to build on the legacies. I, you, are, you are putting words in my mouth. In, in fact, if you want me to comment on that, I say I will improve. If improving on is not the same as building on. Because I cannot say I will build on the, somebody's own legacy. It, 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 that will be peculiar to that individual. I would like to improve on, nothing is so good that you cannot improve on it. So I use the word improve, I didn't well. say build on. So Please. would you say he has done well as a wrap up? Do you consider it a fair question? The president has done as much as his strength and exposure and knowledge can carry him. By making sure that we have remained together up to today, it's an achievement. Right. So I think he has done to the best of his ability. Thank you, Senator Namani. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on The Morning Show.